Hi guys, it's Niall here and welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Uh, today we're very quickly going to look at a quick and efficient way of turning your existing CAD 2D details into a reference standard Revit 2D details that you can then withdraw into every project that you want going forward. You can either bring them in to your file by linking views from an existing file once you've created the Revit 2D detail or you can basically have them present in your standard template under the drafting views for you to draw down whenever you need. So I'm very quickly going to go through the process of importing the CAD file into the Revit environment, converting it into Revit recognized lines, adding additional detail and text notes, and then finally changing the presentation of the CAD detail lines within Revit so that it presents a little bit cleaner and uh, more consistently with the rest of the Revit output. So to start, as you can see, we have a very standard Tegral Ease detail here. Uh, typically, this is the kind of level of detail that you'd be happy to, to uh, model in an LOD 300 or similar Revit model, but let's just assume we're under time constraints and we have the standard details to draw down. So we have this detail within CAD and we want to bring this into the Revit environment and convert it into a Revit detail that we can use in every project going forward. We want to do this as quickly and efficiently. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new drafting view for us to import the CAD detail into. So we're going to go into our view dialog and select drafting view. We're going to call this Eve's example. And then we're going to go to our insert tab and under the import dialog, we're going to select import CAD and we're going to navigate to our Eve's detail. We're going to select colors as preserve. As you can see, current view only is grayed out because we're in a drafting view. We can only apply to that view only. Our layers and levels, we're going to set to all. Our import units are millimeter. And positioning, we're just going to use our manual center and place it in the view. Okay, so we're going to open that and we're going to place it as such. Now, I think one is to one as a scale, as we all know, isn't going to work from a drawing detail perspective. So I think a more appropriate scale is probably going to be one is to 10. So I'm going to select that first. Okay. So we've set our view to one is to 10. Now, we can very, very quickly turn this around into a Revit 2D detail without much work at all. And the way we do that is because we've imported it and not linked it, we can select the file itself. And when we select it, you get a modify tab appear on the top. And there's the explode dialog. Under the explode dialog, you can select partial explode. This essentially stops the CAD object that's been imported as being recognized as a single object and converts it into 2D elements within Revit. Um, so it'll take the, the layers that were present in the CAD file, create new line styles in Revit, and then basically append the layer to a new line in the new line style in Revit. So what we're going to do is we're going to undertake that exercise. We're going to select partial explode. And as you can see, it's exploded the whole thing. Okay, We can now select any single item here and it's actually editable now live in Revit. Now, this is not without its faults. Sometimes the text elements disappear altogether and you actually have to reinsert the text. It may be worth reinserting the text anyway because you actually have the leaders not functioning as leaders, but they're independent objects because they came in from CAD. You'll also see certain things like if this was a batting line style, it's now broken up into literally hundreds of lines. You may want to remove those lines in this instance and apply an actual batting um, detail item. But there's a lot of different things you can do now. You can start converting this into 2D components if you wish. So for example, we have a 200 by 160 or so um, UB member here. And we can easily swap that out for a known member that we have on our detail. So let's just say that this is a standard detail, but we still want to reflect known members. And we know that this isn't actually a legitimate member size. We can go 
into our insert tab and we can load family and under load family we can navigate down to our detail items bearing in mind i'm in the uk metric here and then we can go down to g structural carcassing metal we can go structural steel framing and let's say we could bring in new zeta rails or we could go into our steel sections and navigate down to our universal beams and find a size appropriate for what we're doing and we could say okay maybe a maybe we do have a 254 by 102 instead of this representation that they have here in our section and we want to make sure that our standard duty detail in this project is reflecting our actual section so i'm just going to press ok and then we can go back to our annotate tab and select component and as you can see there's our new member i place that roughly and now i can snap that up to the snap midpoint so you can use this snap midpoint um if you press sm it'll show the midpoint of the line you've selected and then it'll align to it and then i can actually just go behind and delete that block out so as you can see you can very quickly generate your 2d data by mixed components of zeta rails and your structural members um, and additional line and textiles if you'd like so I, we also know that, for example, the, the CAD textile that's came across from Tegral in their details is not representative of how our CAD, uh, how our, um, our text objects are printed in Revit. So we can actually select all instances in view, select visible in view, and then we can change that to, let's say, 2.5 area. And you can see that we've actually just changed our text type throughout. So yet again, I can right click. Select all instances in view, 2.5 aerial. And you, you begin to see how, how easy it is to actually convert these over. We can then change the presentation of the layers that have been converted uh, very quickly. So rather than selecting the objects and right clicking and overriding the graphics by view by element, we can go into our manage dialog and under additional settings, we can go down to line styles. If we break open our line styles here, you will actually see that a lot of the layers that were in our previous project have now been assigned in our detail have been given independent detail line styles in Revit. So we can select one and two here, let's say, and we can give that a projection of four and let's say six, six respectively, sorry. And I also think that layer zero here, I want to put that on a green. Okay, when we press apply, you can see that that's changed the presentation throughout. So I might actually change those two to reverse one another. So you can see how quick you can manipulate. So if you know the layers, that were in the CAD file, you can quickly control the presentation of all of those layers very quickly. And um, the Tegral detail itself isn't a very good example of this because it is very weak on layers. I didn't want to introduce too many layers in the project uh, file, so it only had two or three layers assigned to the entire detail itself, um, which is not reflective of how a real AutoCAD library of details will be. So you could imagine that you could have 30 or 40 details, let's say standard details for your typical Tegral clad or Kingspan clad building, uh, which you want to start integrating into your Revit projects in the early stages before you get to this kind of level of model development, maybe just for early stage pricing or something like that. You can quickly convert all of those AutoCAD details one by one into independent draft and views, and then you can save those drafting views into your Revit template, for example, so that every project you open going forward, let's say you have an architectural template, you want your cladding details to all be ready and present and counted for. Better yet, it's um, probably more appropriate to have an independent, let's say, cladding project file, where you can put your Tegra cladding standard details in, your Kingspan standard details in, your uh, oh, any given number of, of standard details for any given number of providers you can have them all in a standalone project file and then you can go into your manage tab and 
insert those views from a previous project and you can basically just tell it to navigate to the existing project and draw down those views only so rather than bringing in four or five hundred standard details you only bring in the one specific that you want so that dialogue in terms of bringing in additional views from existing projects i'm not going to go into now i'll leave that for a separate video which i'll then link in the aftermath uh, it's very powerful it's excellent for legend development it's also a very very good way of not introducing too much clutter and increasing the file size of your template by too much uh, people have a tendency to make their templates very heavy by including everything in them whereas ideally you'd have a template for your annotation all of your standard construction build-ups in terms of model geometry that you typically use in your practice and then you'd have independent project files that you you know office-wide are good resources to draw down things such as the detail you see in front of you so that was a very quick example of how you can convert a standard 2d cad detail into a standalone 2d revit detail that you can use in every project going forward i hope that was informative for you if you have any questions at all please make sure to leave them in the comment section below don't be afraid of giving the video a like and subscribing. I have content like this that I'm going to be publishing week on week and we'll go into certain things in more detail if it's requested. If not, we'll just cover the whole remit of the whole program and uh, hopefully you'll learn a lot from it. Thanks a million, guys. My name is Niall and this is the 8020 BIM channel. See you again now. Bye-bye.